Well, good morning, Facebook. <laughs> I thought I'd log in here and do a live quick little video. Um, been getting asked a lot of questions on my design process and how I take my pen and ink illustrations and put them on beer can labels. So I thought I would do a little process video uh, behind the scenes of how I take the pen and ink um, from the hand-drawn illustration and combine it with my graphic design to put it on labels. So I'll give you a, a quick little background information about myself. Um, again, I'm Jen, the face behind Hoot Design Studio, and I have my degree in graphic design. Uh, I went to Bradley Academy, um, which was actually then bought out by the Art Institute. But uh, I've been in the marketing and advertising industry um, since about 2004. So a little over 15 years. Um, I have a lot of print advertising, logo branding development. Um, so yeah, I've worked at ad agencies, um, including a designer at York Wall Coverings for several years, Jarvis Green Design Marketing, um, doing print advertising, web design, um, all kinds of things. So about 2019, um, I opened Hoot Design Studio which is actually a DBA of Jen's Creative Designs, LLC. I was found by uh, Papyrus Greeting Cards. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with some of these. Um, in about 2019, um, unfortunately, Papyrus filed uh, bankruptcy and they're now under um, an umbrella under American Greeting Cards. Um, but this kind of launched my career with illustration and I knew I wanted to do something um, with my fine art and combine it with uh, graphic design. So as my freelance grew um, and I was looking for creative opportunities to continue to explore my illustration, um, I launched Hoot Design Studio and went full time with it in about 2019. So my first label, what kind of got me into label design was for Bald Hills Distillery out in Dover. So I did the illustration work for this label, uh, the pen and ink cabin, moonshine still. This is delicious, by the way. Um, so I just did the illustration work for this, and they had one of their in-house graphic designers do the label, which is where uh, my wheels started spinning that, you know, hey, I'm, I'm not just the fine artist, I'm also a graphic designer, and I could provide the complete label myself. So I began doing mock-ups, entering contests, and just building a portfolio of beer can labels and other labels featuring my pen and ink illustrations. Um, just started reaching out to breweries to show them uh, how I combine the, the two skills. So today I'm going to show you how I take um, my pen and ink illustrations. So this is drawn, typically I use a 03 micron pen with a variety of hatching. You can see the stippling here in the, uh, in the grass. So a typical illustration like this can take me anywhere from six to eight hours to illustrate. I begin with uh, a pencil sketch or two um, based on after a client brief to figure out uh, exactly what they're looking for for the beer. So this one, um, the creative concept was based on uh, Nighthawk. This is actually a nickname uh, of the head brewer here at Monument City uh, Brewing in Baltimore. So they wanted to do something with a uh, backpack because uh, I'm told that when they take trips, uh, the head brewer always has a backpack on him. So they wanted to do a, uh, a nice hazy double IPA uh, in that theme, kind of dedicated to uh, the quirkiness that he's always got that backpack with him. So as you can see on the patch here in the stitching, I put uh, Nighthawk, his nickname. So once the concept is approved, um, the pencil sketch is approved, then I begin the ink work. Um, Cause as you know, uh, once it's inked, it's really hard to modify and change. I can do some things in Photoshop, um, but I need that, that final approval before I spend the time doing all the, the fine detail and stippling. So the next step, um, I pop this um, original illustration on my flatbed scanner, which you can't see, but it's over there. 
Um, and I scan it in at 600 DPI resolution just to make sure it's larger than this. Um, that way I can play around with it in case we use it for t-shirts or other advertising. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera here and show you my computer screen so I can show you some different things here in Photoshop. And once I scan it, uh, the process of what I call digitizing it, let's see if I can get this to focus in real nice. Okay. So as you can see, this is actually a, a clip from my website, uh, just kind of walking you through the process. Um, once I have it laid out in pencil, uh, then I begin the inking process, and then it's colored in Photoshop. So let me close out of this and open Photoshop to give you a peek at the actual process. There's a fun one uh, on the fly. All right, so it's, it's finally done, it's inked, the fine art part is done, it's been scanned in. I have a nice 600 DPI JPEG that I open in Photoshop and I'm gonna begin creating layers and knocking out the paper. So essentially, the scan comes in. This is what it looks like. You, th you think the paper is white, but it's not 100%. It's not pure white. So I do a select color range, and I select all that white of the paper. Um, I'll have to use the eyedropper a couple different times, select different areas, and it's gonna highlight, um, you see the little marching ants here, it's gonna highlight all that white of the paper, and I'm going to delete it. Once it's deleted, I'm left with just the ink, and I can begin to separate it and color it that way. Um, let me deselect here and show you. So I create a white and a black layer underneath it. When I turn on the black layer, um, you're gonna see this is just the ink. Um, there's a lot of gray tones, there's white, uh, gaps in between. You'll see over here, if you can see in the screen, um, you'll have little artifacts, you know, just imperfections in the paper, uh, extra little discoloration. So I can go in here and delete and remove those. Um, I'll take and select this entire ink layer and fill it. If I go up to edit, fill, I'll fill with a complete black. So when you're looking at it over top of the black layer, it's gonna be completely black. Let me turn that one off. So you'll be able to see the difference here between this is filled black with a fill in Photoshop versus the original pen and ink that's of the paper. So the black creates a multiply effect. It's going to deepen the tones, rich in the black. Um, again, when you turn everything off, you're going to see the little transparent squares here in Photoshop. That means there is no paper back there. This is a complete transparency. So I can create other colors behind this. So let's just... I don't know, let's fill it with this orange. So this is how I begin to color the art itself. I can select the ink and color the ink all together. Um, sometimes I'll do that and then I'll take my eraser tool and erase out sections to allow the black layer to shine through. So that piece will be missing essentially. Um, a lot of times I'll also take, let's get rid of this orange, that's kind of hard to see. I'll put the light back on. So I'll take my uh, Bezier tool, the pen tool here, um, or the, uh, the lasso tool, and I'll clip out, I'm going to do it really fast so this isn't going to be perfect, um, but I'll clip out sections of the illustration, like the backpack here, Again, this is super fast. I want to go in nice and tight and zoom in and, and get it real nice looking when I'm actually doing it. Um, and select that path on my path layer. Then I'll Command J and jump that layer. So I just have that backpack. So maybe 
I want that backpack to be orange. I'm going to fill just that area with the orange, turn back on the black or maybe the blue layer. Um, let's see, the blue still has the backpack. So if I select the backpack and delete it off of the blue layer, um, that's how I begin to color it. I think, uh, let me try and get my screen adjusted here so you can see it a little better. Um, but yeah, so let me go over to the actual label art. Um, so this is the real label art you can see here on the can. I don't know how well this is showing up here live on Facebook. I'm typically logged into uh, Zoom or Google Meet and I can just share my screen here with you. Um, but I thought I'd give this a try. So this is the actual Photoshop document of uh, the, the can art. You can see all the different layers here. Um, I group them between, you know, the outline of the backpack. We have the grass over here. Let me move my layers palette. We have the grass. Um, so I'll color underneath it as well as color the actual ink. Um, I use different brushes. Let me pull up a new layer here. Uh, let's see. Brush, make him orange. Um, so this is a charcoal brush, and if I enlarge the size here. So I use different styles of brushes to color underneath the layers of the ink, um, as well as coloring, you know, the different areas of the ink itself. So all these are separated. Um, when I present the colored illustration to the client for review, it makes it nice and easy in case they say, you know, hey, I don't really like the blue of his shirt. Um, why don't we try orange? Um, so I can easily recolor each section once I have everything completely clipped out into different layers. So it makes, you know, the process of taking um, the pen and ink, I, I love to work in just the black and white because then once I'm in the computer, um, it makes a quicker process once you have everything clipped out um, to be able to experiment and explore different colorways and textures. Um, if I were to do that by hand, let's say this was watercolored or gouache or colored pencil, it's, it's a one-time done thing. Um, so in Photoshop, it allows me to explore all those different options. So let me just Command Z a couple times and deselect. So once I have the artwork completely colored, we're working at a, a 300 DPI CMYK. Um, this is a sized template that I created for the actual label. The label, what? I don't want to show you that one yet. <laughs> the label is here in Photoshop. So, or in Illustrator, excuse me. So the actual linked art is a Photoshop document. You can see all my layers here in Illustrator. I keep the artwork underneath. And then this green is the dye line where it's going to be trimmed. If you look at the label, this is, this is the edge of the label where it's trimmed and the bleed. So the artwork is created in Photoshop. Then I lay that file, I link it in Illustrator. And then I'm able to play with adding the logo, the graphic design of the colored band, the UPC, what the logo looks like for uh, the name of the beer. This is a hazy double IPA. So I explored a couple different colorways. These are my swatches up here. Uh, these are vector created logos. Um, I keep a duplicate of, if I used a font instead of custom lettering, um, a duplicate over here so I know what font I used. So I take this vector design, whether it's, you know, a fun little uh, graphic here. It keeps blowing my screen out here. It's probably hard to see in face on Facebook. Um, but this is all created as vector and outlines. So once I'm happy with the label, the template and the size, so this is a 16 ounce. Um, every brewery that I work with is a little different. Um, if it's a 12 ounce, the label's gonna be longer, depending on the printer. Um, the dye lines can change. You can see this is more of a rounded corner. This one isn't. The size, the gap of the label in between that wraps around. Um, 
so it, it, everyone's different, um, but once I establish that template or branding for that specific brewery, I know the size area of the art. So when I'm illustrating it, I can illustrate to kind of that ratio because I know what template that's going to go in. Again, keeping in mind um, when you're looking at the front of the can, when I illustrate and lay this out, um, I want to leave an area that I'm going to be able to have the logo front and center, the name of the beer, and the main theme of the artwork. So the rest of the artwork is just going to kind of wrap around and fill in additional eye candy of that label. So once I have this laid out, I will go back in over here to Photoshop and pop it into a can mock. Let's see if Facebook is going to zoom in on that one for me. So this will show me, I drop the label onto a can um, just as a mock-up so I can see what it's going to actually look like on this can. What's going to be front and center when this can is sitting on the shelf at the distributor. I want to make sure that everything is uh, where it needs to be. So I'll explore that as a flat mock-up as well just to kind of get an idea of what that's going to look like and wrap around. Um, cause you, you want to, you want to make sure that you grab the customer's attention when this can is sitting on the shelf. Um, the only, the only thing that is helping it sell is that label. Uh, there's, there's a ton of purchasing power in, in the label design. A lot of people select beers, um, or products for that matter, based on the label. So I want to make sure what you see here, um, entices the viewer, makes them thirsty to try that beer. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much my process from the pen and ink um, to scanning it, to coloring it, to getting it on the final label. Uh, there's a lot of other key aspects that'll go into it. Um, let me pull up my uh, PDF here. So this is uh, what's called a cell sheet. Let's see if Facebook will zoom. I know it's blowing the color out here like crazy. Uh, but this is a sell sheet for the beer. So this would go to distributors, tap rooms, um, to kind of sell the beer and introduce the name of it, some highlights, what the malts, hops, how it's available. It's available in half kegs, 16 ounce cans, um, call out the ABV and the style of the beer. Um, so each beer that I designed for specifically for Monument City in Baltimore gets a sell sheet. Um, these are all vector created little fun icons. Um, this file was actually an InDesign with links to Photoshop for the art and vector uh, Adobe Illustrator created icons. So this will also get a tap handle. So this will go on the tap at bars and uh, tap rooms throughout Baltimore. Again, keeping it within brand. Um, so if they bought the cans, at the distributor when they're out at the bar they're going to recognize the artwork and the vibe and say hey that's that's that really good one that i that i just drank last weekend so it goes on a tap handle as well as a keg color repeating the colorways the logo keeping it uh, within brand and here's a sneak peek don't tell anyone <laughs> these aren't out yet but uh, stickers are coming soon uh, for Backpack Guy, Nobo, Sobo, and Day Hike. Um, so I took my art and created the pink here as the dye line where the sticker is going to cut out. Um, while I have you, I can show you a couple other uh, labels. So this was just Backpack Guy. Here's an example of On the Fly. Let's make sure Facebook is focusing here on him. So On the Fly is a brown ale um, designed for 1623. I have his little can right here. And he's actually got a matching coaster. So they did uh, coasters here as well. Don't bother me while I'm fishing unless you've got beer. <laughs> so this is one of my uh, favorite illustrations to design. I, I love doing uh, nature and animals and things like that. So let me pop open again. We're looking at Illustrator. This is the template, uh, completely different size than Backpack Guy. I overlay all my text, the information, the vector logos. 
I'm gonna go to outline mode and show you. All that's overlaid over top of the Photoshop document. Let's see if I have that Photoshop open. Yeah, there we go. Let's see if it'll let me zoom in here. I've gotta find a way that it doesn't blow out the color of the monitor when I have my phone attached over here on the tripod. Um, but as you can see, so I created all my different layers. There's a ton of layers involved. Sometimes I, I get lazy and I just leave them named whatever, you know, layer 25 or 450. <laughs> but uh, I used a lot of different textured brushes in here to create the effect of the water. Stippling on the water, hatching underneath um, to create the diversion of the the trout between the water and then this photoshop file you can see it's just the art is popped back into illustrator to create that final label again scanning the artwork in as high as res as possible so we can create other swag and other fun stuff with that final piece of art and then i'll give you a quick little peek here this is one i'm working on now if it'll focus in there. So this is Tahoe Tessie. It's a new line of seltzers by Record Street Brewing Company uh, out in Reno, Nevada. I'm stoked to be able to create the branding, uh, the complete label packaging for this one. Yeah, they're starting with a lime hard seltzer. So this label is going to be uh, repurposed and recolored as the different seltzers come out. The next one will be raspberry. Um, so raspberry will get a pink hue, the logo will change from this green, the lime green will swap out to pink. Um, again, this is a Photoshop document here of the art. The rest of it's placed in Illustrator, um, combined with the graphic design of the look and the logo. Uh, this specific logo, I'll go to outline mode so you can see if it's going to show you here on Facebook. Um, this is the Vector logo. I actually commissioned um, Jeremy Friend, the studio of Jeremy Friend, to design this logo for us um, so I could focus more on the, the label design, branding, look, vibe, and colorways. Let's see here, I think I have the PDF open to give you a peek of what the other seltzers are going to look like. Yeah. So the first one that comes out is going to be the Lime Seltzer. The next one, the raspberry. You can see how the colorways change. So when that can is front and center on, in the distributor, um, you know it's it's another seltzer by Tahoe Tessie, um, but it's a different flavor. So just creating that brand awareness and flopping out the colors um, to give you that vibe. A little background about Tahoe Tessie. Um, read the little paragraph of copy here. I was really excited to be able to uh, Add some copywriting skills to this label as well. Um, so Tahoe Tessie hard seltzers take their inspiration from the legend of Tahoe Tessie, a long lost cousin to the world famous Loch Ness Monster. Tessie is a Lake Tahoe folklore that has long been shared and now can be celebrated with a moment of pure refreshment. Discover the crisp flavor as your taste buds dive into North America's largest alpine lake home of the 60 foot long serpentine creature. Again, that's in Reno, Nevada. So these will be coming soon. I think um, they plan to launch the end of March and it's a nice crisp uh, 99 calorie seltzer. So that's why we went with a beautiful color scheme. Just keep it light and refreshing. These are some of the flowers, the state flowers that you would find around the lake. The lake is a crystal clear blue, um, tone. It's gorgeous. I'd really like to get out there and visit. There is a ton of rocks and it's just beautiful mountain landscaping all around the lake. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much my process from uh, the pen and ink illustration to combining it with my graphic design. If you have any questions, um, definitely shoot me a message, leave them in the comments, and I hope to share more of these videos soon. If you're on Instagram, definitely give me a follow at Hoot Design Studio. I post a lot of behind the scenes 
things on Instagram, um, but I do definitely plan to up my game on Facebook in 2021. That's, that's definitely a goal of mine. So uh, I look forward to uh, sharing some more live videos here with you soon. Thank you, everyone.